now a quick little course in the science of climate change, which we're calling Science for Dummies. We need some dummies. And lo, there's always a dummy in the crowd. We're also looking for a man in a suit. He can be to my right. Now, dummies, are you ready? Since 1896, when Swedish scientist Svante Arrhenius first declared that increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere could increase Earth's temperatures, global warming has been a well-known and well-understood concept in the world's scientific community. The main human cause source of global warming has been the burning of fossil fuels. Since the Industrial Revolution, concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has risen nearly 50%, from 280 parts per million in the 1700s to 410 parts per million now. Since weather record keeping began, and especially since the 1950s, the Earth has been growing hotter year after year. 17 of the 18 hottest years ever recorded have occurred since the year 2000. And the world is still spewing CO2 into the air at an undiminished volume. Scientists everywhere agree that global warming exists and that human activity is causing it. All over the world, even as we stand here, its effects are being felt. The largest wildfires in California's history have been burning through much of this summer. New temperature records have been broken this summer in places as far flung as Norway and Japan, Siberia and Algeria, Canada and China. Just a few weeks ago, flooding in India made hundreds of thousands of people homeless. Here in Portland this August was the hottest August ever recorded, right here where we are. Last summer, over four feet of rain, whoa, from a single storm, inflicted $125 billion of damage on the state of Texas. Just this, no. <laughs> just this past month, after a full year of darkness, the last houses in Puerto Rico to lose power from another storm finally got their lights back on. And yet, though climate change is growing, so is the will to do something about it. This past year, 95% of the energy installation in the United States came from the sun and the wind. By 2020, renewable energy will everywhere probably be cheaper than fossil fuel. When Washington, D.C. left the Paris Climate Accord and began rolling back climate regulation, states and cities and individual businesses from all over the country stepped up to fill the leadership void. In five days, they will gather in California for the Global Climate Action Summit, ready there to come up with major new initiatives in CO2 reduction. And tomorrow, in joyful support of those initiatives and looking ahead to the midterm elections in November, where climate issues can be one of the things powering our voting. Tomorrow we will march and rally by the hundreds through the city of Portland, gathering in Lincoln Park at 11.30. We will there honor a codfish, our noble neighbor in the Gulf of Maine. And we will hear young speakers, nobody anywhere near as old as I am, and through music and song and play get pumped up to make a difference in the November elections. Do you understand, my friends? Do you understand? Ah, even a dummy can understand climate change. 
but not the man in the suit. <laughs> well done. Good luck well standing done. ovation. Alrighty.